This video is about working with databases directly from R. So, so far we've learned how to connect R Studio to an SQLite database, this uh, portal.sqlite database down here, and run some queries in SQL. But what we often want to do is actually integrate that database work directly into our R scripts so that we can do things like pull data directly out of the database to work with. And this has a variety of advantages. First, there's no need to export data from the database into a file and then load it into R and to then do that every time the database updates. We can just get our code to go directly and get the most recent data straight out of the database. And it also lets the database do the heavy lifting. So if we're working with large data sets, it can make it possible to do computation as part of our R scripts that we couldn't do entirely inside of R, and it may make it faster as well. And we can do this in one of two ways, either using just the DBI package or by integrating with the dplyr tools that we've already learned to treat databases just like we've treated data frames using dplyr before. To do this, we'll need to install a few packages. Uh, we installed some of these in the last set of material, but let's go ahead and install all of them. And those packages are DBI, and DBI is the basic database infrastructure for R that lets R talk to lots of different kinds of databases and do useful things with them. The second package is RSQLite, and that's capitals for the R, the S, the Q, and the L, and then lowercase for the ITE. And this is the package that lets the DBI package translate between R and SQLite. There are other related packages for translating between R and other database management systems like PostgreSQL. And then finally, if we want to interact with databases directly using dplyr, we also need the db for database plyr package. And that will allow dplyr and the databases to interact by using the packages dbi and rsqlite. I'm just going to go ahead and install these. And then we'll go ahead and load them using library. And so we need the DBI package, the RSQLite package. And we don't actually load dbplyr directly most of the time. We just use library to load dplyr, and then it knows to look for dbplyr. But we do need to have it installed. So we'll go ahead and run those library commands. The first step with using any database from R is then to connect to that database. And we'll call this connection portal DB. And the way that we make a connection is using the DB connect function. So that's db capital C connect. And this takes two arguments. The first is the driver. That's the thing from RSQLite that helps translate between R and the database. And the driver in this case is loaded with the SQLite function. And so this is from RSQLite and it's a function so it needs parentheses. And then the second argument is the path to our 
database file. And so that's just portal.sqlite for us. And we'll see that we get a uh, formal class SQLite connection. And so that means we've connected to this database. There is another common way to see the same line written, and that is the exact same line, but instead of loading our SQLite, we use our SQLite double colon SQLite parentheses, and then portal.sqlite. And this is just a way to get the SQLite function without loading this package. And you see it commonly enough that I wanted to show it to you so it didn't seem weird. But either of these will work fine. Once we've connected to a database, we can then look at it to see what's going on in that database. And so we can do things like list the tables, which we do with DB, capital L list, capital T tables. And then the connection object that we've made, so portal DB. And it'll show us that we have three tables here, a plots table, a species table, and a surveys table. And then it's telling us just that when we're done with the database, we should disconnect from it. We can also find out details of the individual tables if we want to. And so there's a DB, capital L list, capital F fields function. And it takes again the connection and then in quotes the name of the table that we want to look at the details for. And so we can see that the plots table has uh, two fields in it plot ID and plot type. In addition to looking at the tables that are in a data frame, we can also make direct connections to those individual tables. And we can do that using the tbl command from dplyr. And so let's say we wanted to create a direct link to the surveys table. We could create a variable surveys and assign it the output of the tbl function. And now we could pass the tbl function, our connection, to the database. And then the name of the table in quotes that we want to create a connection to. And if we do this and then look at the surveys table, we'll see that we have something that looks like a tibble, the special kind of dplyr data frame for the surveys table. But what's interesting is that this table isn't actually in R yet. It's just a connection to the table in the database. And we can see that because it shows us that it's linked to a database in this portal.sqlite file. And it doesn't know, R doesn't know how many rows are in this table. And that's because it's just looked at the first few rows of the table in the database, because that's quick, uh, and shown it to us. So we've got some idea of what's going on with this table, but it's not a data frame in R yet. And that's why if we tried to click on it over here, instead of seeing a table, we see this sort of more confusing output. If we wanted to bring that whole table back into R, we could do that and we would do it using the collect function. And so uh, we could say surveys underscore df to indicate that this is actually the data frame version of surveys. And then call the collect function on the surveys object. And what this will do is actually go into the database and pull all of the data back into R into a data frame. 
And now we can see that this looks just like a data frame like we expect to, and it's here and will work exactly like it did if we read it in using read.csv. So that's the idea behind how we connect R directly to databases. We use the DBI package along with a package for translating between the database that we're using and R. And then if we want to work with the database using dplyr, we also need to install the dbplyr package, even though we don't typically load it directly. We can connect to databases using dbconnect, the appropriate driver, and the location of the database, which in our case is just a file. We can use commands from DBI like dblist tables and dblist fields to explore what the data looks like. And we can create connections to individual tables using the TBL function from dplyr to uh, connect to a specific table by giving it the connection for the whole database and the name of the table that we want to load. That creates a connection to the table in the database. If we actually want to bring the data back into R, we use the collect function. And we'll use this as our starting point for the next few videos, where we'll then learn how to query the data in the database to get the part of the data that we want back into R to conduct analyses.